Hi. You scared me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't strike the gong. Tom, we're about to enter one of my favorite places I've ever been. Tropical Bamboo Nursery. This is awesome. You know? This place is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, this is amazing. Uh, they have so many different variety of bamboo here. But then as soon as you walk in, I just, again, I love canopy. And then I love all the, what they've done with the understory. Um, this is something that I, I aspire to, you know? Bamboo is one of my favorite types of plants. Do you have a favorite? Gosh, I, I do have two, um, two Dendrocalamus uh, gigantia, which is the giant bamboo. I have old, no, I don't have old ham. I have the Hawaiian bamboo. I have uh, bamboo salaco, uh, the black bamboo. Uh, and then like, you know, Malagensis um, sea breeze bamboo, I believe it is. It's more of a screen. Do you have a blue one? Like you I don't. Angel is this mist? Oh, Dendrocalamus minor among, that, that's pretty. That's really pretty. And there's also another blue bamboo that looks very similar to it. I don't know if I can tell the I difference. I mean, this is, this is beautiful. You can, it's almost like a velvet. Uh, you'll go to you'll go to beautiful gardens, and knuckleheads will carve their names into it. It's such a shame, but that that that's such a beautiful uh, cane, you know that it's got. Yeah, so I, I do I, I like that. Um, I like angels mist. Um, gosh, where do you go? Where do you want to go, bud? Let's go this way. All right, you got it. Wild. That looks like. That's Angel's Miss, isn't it? No, no, that was Angel Miss with the blue there. We just saw that. Oh, Angel Miss. Oh, yeah. really? That was Angel Miss? What's this? Oh, Mexican Weeping Bamboo. This is cool. This is cool. This is kind of what I was looking at. Um, I like this. If I could grab one of these, that would be awesome. Uh, this just has a very unique uh, leaf on the cane here, so. So this is their display garden here, yeah. and then this is what they retail out of, gotcha, I think, okay. or wholesale out of. Wild. Okay. So, I I think, you know, honestly, just the, the blue and an angel mist is what I would be looking for today. Okay. You know, I think I may be looking for the same. Oh, look at this one, though. Isn't that cool? That is cool. That's just like a, uh, a beautiful That'd make privacy a cool screen. Hedge. Yeah. Yeah. How the heck? They have to trim it like that? I I don't think so. That's incredible. Or do they trim it? Maybe they maybe they maybe they do. See it? Seals cut here. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's wander around the garden. Look at see the variegated one? Variegated bamboo. The variegated bamboo over here. Oh, that's pretty. That's bamboo? White Fang Bamboo. Wow. I bet you it's 500 bucks. Yeah. But if it's not, I'll buy one. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is that elephant. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's so cool. See, this is, you know, I like how it's creating a canopy. You walk through, um, and then you can get some understory in here. That's something I'd like to try and emulate. That's the arachnid bamboo. Thank you. Uh, oh, that's not the Buddha belly. That's something different, right? With that swollen. Yeah, I don't know. I usually see it as Buddha no, belly. There's but... a, no, there's a tag there. Here, here, here. You can pronounce that one. Okay. Arthrostemma parvifolium. Arthrostemma parvifolium. Okay. How do you think I did, people? I don't know. That's cool. Is it the same tag over here or is it a different one on this side? No, no, over here. Oh, no. This is this is the uh, Bambusa tudo tudoides. Oh, no. Buddha belly. It is Buddha Oh, it's, belly. it's the cool Buddha belly. Oh, it's cool. It's cool. Because of, the, I think, the <laughs> color there. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, that is Buddha cool. belly. We're now going in with the crocodile monitor. Honestly, I call them the Komodo dragon of the trees. They go through the trees, they're always hiding. Not much is known about them in the wild. 
All that we know of is that they're very powerful. They have long claws, long teeth, a long tail that allows them to climb throughout the trees and fly through them. Honestly, they eat tons of different things from birds and rodents, many different animals, some of the biggest teeth I've ever seen of any monitor this size. So, uh, like I told you guys, keep a little bit of distance at the beginning. I'm gonna keep you in the corner. He is nice, but even by accident, he can actually cause some damage. Are you guys ready? All right. All right. This is Buggy the Crocodile Monitor. Hopefully you guys get to see those very, very sharp teeth. Their skulls look insane. You can see those teeth. They literally look like crocodile teeth. They're shaped like crocodile teeth as well. And they break them off all the time. We find them in the water bowls all the time out here. Now that coloration, green, uh, green yellowish coloration, not all of them have them. It is a locality that they have. You guys can see very dark here, but that is all shed. They're very, very yellow in coloration for this locality, as you guys can see right there. Now those claws, they're meant for climbing very high up. They do not want to fall. So imagine how sharp those claws are, as you guys can see right there. Even whenever sometimes he steps on my hand or my leg, I end up bleeding right after. So very, very strong those teeth. Again, we don't want to get grabbed. That long tail, let's see if we can get that tail showing. Very long tail, you guys will see that tail is usually wrapping around something for balance. You see it back there, wrapping around there. One of the longest lizards in the entire world. I think it's number three, I'm pretty sure, of the longest lizards in the world. So I'm pretty sure it's Asian two, number one Komodo, and then this one and Asians fight for number two and three. Very smart animals. He's always very aware of his surroundings. Faster metabolism than the other one I see is eating a lot. Uh, I feed them very differently. Um, I don't know if it's faster metabolism, but because they're different lizards, he's a lot leaner of an animal than a black throat. I feed them larger amounts uh, in like smaller times, sometimes once a week, sometimes every two weeks, depending on his body condition. So I do give him a little bit more during this one. What do you think of this one? Oh, he's just super cool. Yeah. But people put a personality to them that is not real, you know? Like, I think I could work any monitor. But if I go fast, he's gonna think it's food. Uh -huh. He smells it, knows it's my hand. I can move his hand. And lift them. He doesn't like this very much, but he allows it. Lift them just like that. It's completely fine. He doesn't like being picked up, of course, because he's on balance. Yeah. Does like a lace monitor have a similar personality? Yes, yes. I think lace monitors and parentes and stuff like that are probably very similar to the crocodile monitor. And again, he he doesn't like being touched at the top where he can't see you. Yeah. He likes like you gotta let him know, hey, I'm in front of you, touching your chin, lifting you up. Uh, sometimes he just decides to climb on me so I can push him away or let him depending on what I want him to do and that's completely fine I just know what he wants if he allows me to do something I know when he allows it if he does not want me doing something he's also gonna let me know um, and that's of course completely fine with me Let's see if we can show how strong that tail can be You can see his body is over here, his tail is all the way back there in a whole different branch. You see that? That balance is perfect. How often do you work with him? Every single day. Every single day I've been here. 15 minutes? Probably an hour sometimes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. He's full already, he doesn't want to jump. Beautiful, beautiful animals, very rarely seen in the wild. So, a privilege to see here, honestly. You see at the very tip right there, it has a little pointy thing, it's called the egg tooth. So whenever they're inside the egg, they develop that little tooth at the tip of the snout to be able to break the egg. And then after that, it just disappears and never comes back. 
So very, very interesting for these guys. How old is this? Like, what, well, two, three days? Uh, yeah, three days. Three days old for an albino alligator, one of the rarest crocodilians in the entire world. Of course, they don't survive in the wild, only in captivity. We're actually the first public uh, facility that has ever bred them and be able to hatch them. Are they in the pet trade at all? Uh, kind of in the private sector, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple private keepers who produce them. Um, and there's a couple facilities that keep them. But uh, yeah, they're really rare. Well, you're gathering a crowd here, but... Very good. You want to hold them? Now you're holding one of the rarest crocodilians in the world. What do you think of that? Oh, I think it's awesome. Right? That coloration there is like no other animal in the world. Of course, they don't survive in the wild because they can't hide from their predators or their prey. You know, they in the swamps, very dark. This thing is glowing, it's like a flashlight underwater. Everything's gonna try and get away from it and anything that wants to eat it is gonna go right for it. So very small, only about three days old. Um, we incubated the egg ourselves. And we've done it multiple times already. It's not our first albino that we hatched, we have multiple that we have been able to hatch like this guy here and he's in perfect condition uh, of course his belly is already closing down coloration is good activity wise as soon as he was out he was grunting and making that call uh, that usually calls for mom uh, for help now his mom built a nest about this tall off the ground so we have to go in there and look for the eggs so that way raccoons and other animals don't get there first and of course end up eating these beautiful animals are all the babies albino? Yeah, so we do have a pair of albino alligators. So whenever you have two albinos, they always come out albinos. So it's a recessive trait. It's a recessive trait, exactly. So if you put it with, with a normal alligator that does not have the recessive uh, gene, then all of them come out regular looking, uh, a wild type, with the albino gene in them. So they become heterozygous. Uh, and then after that, if you get a heter heterozygous with a, an albino, then you have a fraction of them being an albino and a fraction being a wild type of oh, the normal looking alligator. That'd, that'd be super. I, I would be traumatized if it ever jumped out of my hands. Well, it's trade show time again. We built these exhibits in December 2023. Our next trade show is the landscape show coming up in I think less than two weeks. So we're gonna refurbish these a little bit. This is our succulent display. It's a little bit overgrown, but not too, too bad. And this here is our fantasy coral reef display where you can kind of see the fish didn't make it very good, but the display itself looks somewhat similar to the way it looked in December. But unfortunately, this is our tropical rainforest display, and it is a bit overgrown. Over the next hour and a half, we're gonna transform this and get it back to trade show shape. When we built this the first time, everything was from scratch. Every plant we put in was a brand new plant. I'm gonna take an advantage that this has been sitting here for nine months. We're gonna use some of the plants in here and we're just gonna clean up the foreground and clean up some of this ratty material and use some of the old with some new. I'm gonna leave this Brazilian tree fern in here. I'm gonna cut out some of this material that's falling in over the interior of the display. So I'm thinking we're definitely going to save the philodendron. Okay. We're going to save this fern. The ferns. We're going to trim this up a little bit. We probably want to save as much on the back as we can, but I think maybe almost everything in the front has to come out. The maiden hair fern has to go. Yes, yes, too big. Do we need to replace the soil in the foreground? Yes, we have to. So this is the soil we use for almost everything at Holt Nursery. It is 35% perlite, that's the white stuff. It is 50% Canadian peat, and it is 15% a compost, a local compost 
mixed with a little bit of Florida peat. Ready to get plants? Yes. Okay. We're gonna go through the greenhouse, collect some plants. This right here is Begonia maculata. It is an underrated begonia. I think it's spectacular. This was one of the first plants I've ever owned. They get six feet tall. You just put it on a bamboo stake. It's absolutely incredible. Begonia maculata. This is reticulated white petonia. It's going to brighten up the display. It's going to have a nice white color. And it's a slow grower. Relatively slow grower. So this is another cool one. This is, this is the Tradescantia. This is Purple Highway. I get it from Kenya. The red velvet is really unique, everyone. I bought this from a nursery in Homestead, Florida. I don't know anyone else that sells this in the nation other than this nursery in Homestead, Florida. The key is it's, it's like a burgundy foliage for inside your house that stays low and it stays burgundy. So this right here is Pilea aquamarine. It is a ground cover. It is kind of a bluish ground cover. It's a very unique color. And we have a couple different Pileas here. You can see here, this is more of a, of a bronze. Do you want them both or just the blue? That's a Sao Paulo. This is the Sao Paulo, I'm told. Mm -hmm. And this is the aquamarine. aquamarine. Do you want them both or just one? Now, this sedum ogon in full sun is bright, bright yellow. But since we're growing it in a greenhouse, that is, I don't know what this is, I think it's like 70% shade. It is not really bright yellow, but it's gonna contrast with the Pileas very nice. Here I am with the Hoya. This is Hoya Australis Tricolor. This is Hoya Compacta or Hoya Rope. So we're ready now to work on the foreground. The only thing I'm missing from this is a pizia, and I'm gonna go get some right now. And some moss. You are the boss and the artist of this display. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Up. Hey Lulu, I brought you some more plants, some rare plants. I got you your moss here. I got you ruby moss, arbovite moss, avatar moss, and I got you this new moss here. This is Sejanella apoda. It's the meadow spike moss, zones five through nine. I bought this from Plant Delights Nursery for 20 bucks. I'm selling it for a lot less than this, everybody. Get it at your local garden center. <laughs> okay, I also have apesia, the pink apesia which this is the first year it's available. It's been available to collectors only through like the small little Etsy stores, but now you can buy it in bulk. We're almost finished, so we're just going to put air plants, Tillandsias, in a couple holes, and we're good done. We will see you next week, and don't forget to like and subscribe.